Week four pickups. Bum, 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 bum. You two boss it going the go downs is back. We are back with week four pickups, and we're here every Tuesday night picking every single NFL game. It's been a wacky year wacky. so far. Let's see mm-hmm. if it continues to be wacky. Got some interesting games this week. Here's your leaderboard below us. No one's doing great in the world, but and you see the uh, subs league down here. You can still join it. Not too late because the winner of each week joins us with their picks on the show. Week three winner Aiden O'Connor has his picks on the show tonight. But Skipper, Skipper leading the subs league with a whopping thirty-one. It's actually a tie. Go pack, go Dylan Harp. He had our he had his picks on the show last week. Thirty-one. I forgot to say I'm alongside the Hall of Famers. They're back with me. Thank you, Junior and Pete. We're ready to go. Do we just get into those picks? Why not? Why not I, us? I, and here we go. We are in those picks. I guess the, the guest picker is going with the Cowboys. He's already up there. Graphics guy already had him up there. He's got the boys. He's got the Cowboys. Aiden O'Connor. Got a little Jordan Love as his icon. He's going with Dallas. You should have Aiden O'Connell as this thing. <laughs> that would have been good. Yeah. So, uh, I take it he's a Packers fan. Mistake, he is a Packers fan. Mistakes were uh, made on his part, though. Why are you going with the Giants? No. His... his uh, his little, his, his, sc- little, his, little, name. his little thing over there. Okay. You should have Give me the Cowboys. Yeah. Give me the Cowboys. Junior's taking the, Giants the boys. cannot be trusted. I know they just won. They cannot be trusted. Um, Can't trust anybody in this That's in this true. There's, there's a lot of games that's – Nobody like. can be trusted except for the Vikings. They will never lose ever yeah. again. They're going to win every week. Not. But Dallas is going to move the ball. I can at least bank on that. Will they score? I don't know. They got a fantastic kicker. They're going to put points on the board. The Giants, it's very hit or miss if they're going to put points on the board. Yeah. So that's why I'm going with the the Cowboys. Good point bringing up the kickers. Got Greg Joseph for the Giants. He's probably going to miss some kicks, maybe an extra point, so he did for Minnesota at least. And Brandon Aubrey is elite, absolutely elite. Elite, But let me tell you something. Who looks better between these teams right now? The Giants, plain and simple, look better. They, They themselves, they are actually getting better each week. Uh, and really stepped up last week, and the Cowboys' run defense is garbage. So the Giants could just run the ball to Singletary, Daniel Jones, keep it underneath the neighbors, and have a shot. But I'm following the trend of the Cowboys just having success against the Giants in recent days and recent years. And on the road. And and, uh, they're bouncing back in this one. CeeDee Lamb has a monster game. Micah Parsons gets after Daniel Jones, and that will do it. The Cowboys bounce back and get their shit together in this one in primetime football, Thursday night football. Mm. That was good. Yeah, I'm going with my, Thank you. my gut. I'm going with my gut here. Just going with the Cowboys. Oh, okay. I mean, anything, anything can happen. This, this year has been weird so far. It's been funky. Funky. Yeah, but let me tell you something. Every well, single year, the first three weeks are funky. I think yeah. it's a little more funky this year, but they're typically funky. Sometimes it so goes. What you're, what you're saying is the Titans are going to go 14 and three. Fact. Ooh, there facts. We go. No. Good. Uh, no, not at all. Uh, sometimes <laughs> it's through four weeks. So will this be the week oh, everything okay. kind of goes back to normal, or or are we uh, are we done here? We we're will doomed. see. We'll find out maybe Yellers on Thursday. Got the boys. Last Thursday felt like things were going back to normal. The Patriots end up being who we thought they were, and the Jets end up being who we thought they were in really good football teams. So Thursday I was like, okay, that makes sense. Here we go. Normal shit's happening. Wrong. Insane stuff. New, the noon games is where it's at. You notice that? Mm-hmm. Even in past years, those – well, if you're East Coast, 1 p.m. Eastern – on Sunday, those games are wacky as shit. Wacky is the is the word wacky. of the day. Let's see how many times we can use it. Uh, but wacky. reminder: next video, score predictions, picks against the spread for every single game. Check it out. We do it every. I do it every week. Wednesday, power rankings already up. We got loads of content. Always adding more. Doing shorts. Turn notifications on so you don't miss any of it. Great Saints, man. Falcons, battle. NFC South battle. The Saints were super hot. Let me down. Their fans in the comments were thinking, all right, we're never losing. Anytime one person picks against us, we're, there, we're, we're throwing a fit, all right? But they came back down to earth a little bit, all right? So we can relax. I still think it's a good team, really good defense. Offense, again, kind of came back down to earth. The Falcons are 1-2. and two. But that, I think they look, that. they look pretty good. I, that, you know, they look at the uniforms they're wearing. And they got the retros on at home. Both these teams got offensive line injuries. Both teams are going to be without their center. Both without their center. I and the Falcons. Like. What's that? I know what that feels like. 
Yeah, and then the Falcons likely without their right tackle, Caleb McGarry, as well. So he got some injuries up front, more so for the Falcons. Could that be the deciding factor in this one? I definitely could just – I have a weird take on this game. Right. And, it, and, it, and if this right. – when you think about this game, you think, okay, 50-50, right? Anybody right. can win this right. game. So right. you automatically, right, right. want to say it's a close game. Right. I think it's 50-50 on who wins, but I don't right. think it's a close game. I think it's a bo- I don't know if I've ever had this take before. I think the winner of this game wins in an ass beating. I could I'm not guaranteeing anything. I could Guaranteed. I could be off. But I think it's going to be an ass beating one way or the other. Uh mm-hmm. I I don't, you know, that's just well because the the Saints could get a lead and they early like they did the first two weeks and they can keep that lead by running the ball. The Falcons are struggling a little bit to stop the run. Saints are really good running the football with Kamara and they can if they start off hot, they can control the clock and just dominate put put the Falcons in ob, uh, obvious roll with the Saints. Obvious passing situations and blitz the hell out of Kirk Cousins with a, a little bit of hurt offensive line. But if the Falcons get a lead early, the Saints rely too much on the run game being a factor. If they're in obvious pass situations, they're done. They are not going to win the game if they are down by multiple scores in an obvious pass situations. I'm going to go in this one with the quarterback I trust more, and that is Derek Kirk Carr. Cousins. All right, this is my squeaker of the week. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm taking the Falcons at home. Um, I think, like you were talking about, this is pretty much – with how both teams have been playing, this is kind of a 50-50 game. Uh, but it's whoever I, gets a 10-point lead for or nine I, nine point lead. I first. do think it's going to be a commanding win by commanding win 10 plus comfortable Ooh. two scores minimum. Wow! Uh, I don't, you guys are out of your mind. I think it's going to be a really close game. No, it's going to be close, but I think, I think gonna we're going to get a little bit of a pull away. I'm not Mars going in it with a snot pounding. I ain't doing that. <laughs> it's not my normal. It's I don't know about snot pounding. I'd say 13 plus. 13 plus victory. But it, usually when I say that, I'm like guaranteeing the team wins that I picked, but I can it's either going to be the Falcons win by 13, 16 whatever, the Saints win by that much too. Another thing is that the Falcons playmaking safeties back there, they could give Derek Carr some problems if he's in passing situations. Jesse Bates gave him problems last year. Justin Simmons making plays. Uh, and, and, uh, and Raheem Morris runs a lot of zone coverage. A little more difficult to deal with. With The Saints defense really good, but Kirk Cousins typically plays well against that Saints defense, which is typically man coverage too. So I think it's a little more complex for the Saints. But if they get like a 10-point lead or 9-point lead, two score basically is what I'm trying to say, they're in business. Like they're going to continue to run the ball, and they're going to drain the clock, and they have the major, major advantage. So – Looking at the Saints' first two games, that's kind of what needs to happen for them to win big. They need to get a lead, and hold, and they'll be able to hold that. So the start of this game is everything. The start of the first few possessions, everything. So that is going to decide this game. And I guess that's kind of tough to predict on who will like start right off the gate, like who's going to start better, who's going to start with the ball and go down there and score right away. But that's it's definitely an intriguing game. Give me those Falcons at home wearing those Are you putting nice it back in on the Falcons? Unis. What's that? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Mm-hmm. Um, what? Yeah. I, they got screwed by the by the refs because they were playing the Chiefs, and now they will. Did they though? I they don't will know. get. I don't know if they really the favor returned here. I, I people are getting carried away with the Chiefs got gifted by the refs. I think. But they was. have been. I don't know. What happened the week before? What happened the week before? Against the Bengals. I thought that was the right call. The guy bonked. It was the same same thing that happened. I think, okay, it was a missed call this time. I don't think it was like, all right, that's completely phantom. I think the ball was so, it was a bad ball by Cousins. Like, it was, if it was a little more catchable, I think they definitely would have called it. So, should it have been called? Come on, Kirk. Probably. But just, was it completely chosen. phantom? No. I, I think people are getting carried away with the whole Chiefs thing. They're chosen. I don't know. Okay. I'm sick of it. Falcons playing. They're playing good, though. Everyone's got the Falcons. Everyone's, Everyone's done with the Saints. We're done with them All now. Right. That's it. I'm mad. I'm mad at the Saints. I mean, they, they're they probably going to win now. I, was, I know. I'm 0-3 picking Saints games right now. So I was all in with New Orleans last week, and they blew it. They let Dallas Goddard catch the ball, what was that, 10 times for like 100. Something ridiculous you let Goddard Cal Pitts do. game? Yeah. And Aiden O'Connor is the guest picker. He won the week, and that's why you joined that subs league link pinned in the comments so you can win the week and get your picks shouted out mm. in the video. Oh, Rams, Bears. Rams 
depleted with injuries, killed with injuries, but they pull off a come-from-behind victory against the Niners. And the Bears let one slip away. I, I picked the Bears last week. I thought they were going to win that one. They let it slip Me away too. against the Colts. It's bad quarterback play from both sides, but the Colts find a way to win the football game. They're at home. The Bears are actually favored. Last week I was surprised the Bears were underdogs, and Vegas was right, and now the Bears are favored, and I'm shocked. Maybe Vegas knows something. Maybe they're right. It's tough to play in Chicago. And the Rams beat up everywhere. The, the Bears should be able to move the ball. But how much do we trust them in that category? I, I'm going to give me give me the Rams. Stafford just too good. Stafford's not going to lose to Caleb Williams here. He's going to find a way. I mean, that guy, Stafford, he's almost underrated at this point. I thought he was playing at an elite level last year. People didn't give him that credit and what he did against the Niners this past week and Kyron Williams is balling as well. And just think about all the guys that are injured. Uh, I'm going to trust the Rams a bit more. And it looked like the Bears defense looked elite up until last week. They did have some turnovers, but it looked a little vulnerable for the Bears defense. They're still one of the better defenses. So it just kind of tells me the Rams should be able to move the ball at least a little bit. I will take L.A., but that seems like a trap just because Vegas has the Bears' favorite unless that changed – I checked last night, I think. Um, so they don't, they're almost making it seem like a trap, but I, I don't know. I'm going to go Rams. Me and Dan are taking the Bears. Oh, you talked to Dan. Yep. Uh, that's oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, oh, that's Pete. Where whoa, are you whoa, going? Whoa, Who are you whoa, going? You're, whoa, going? You're over here, aren't you? Probably. Yeah, give me the Rams. Um, sorry, Junior. No, just, go ahead. Um, I got to I gotta see more out of, the, out of the Bears offense here. I like their defense. Especially with the Rams depleted um, at the receiver position, it should be favorable for Chicago. But uh, Jonathan Taylor did have some success running the ball. I think Kyron Williams could have some su- success running the ball. Um, but, yeah, just I think the play calling, and I don't think Caleb's really playing that bad, really. I just think it's the play calling and the offensive line's just not well. And DeAndre Swift's, DeAndre Swift's not playing very well either. So um, that's what I worry about It's just the run game, the complement, the pass game and help Caleb out, it's not happening. I thought that was going to happen against the Colts, but it didn't really happen. Is so Keenan going Allen going to play anytime soon? Yeah. That's a great question. That would be big in this game. That might be just too it's many true. options for the Rams to cover if they add one more in there. With the Dunes, they starting to pick it up. So I don't know. But uh, Pete went Rams, Yeller. Rams. Aiden, Aiden O'Connell, Rams. Mm. All right. The Bears boys are the ones on the Bears. AOC. What? AOC. Hey, no, no comment. No, no, we don't talk about that. Well, okay, well, there okay. you have it for the Rams and the Bears. Oh. Could be a good one, folks. What do we got next? Oh, oh. God. Oh. Get Aiden the Packers. Red. Get Aiden the Packers. Crown them. Crown them. Aiden's Pops. taking the Packers. Packers he fan, is. is he? Okay. Yeah. What are you guys He's doing? He's feeling Jordan Love's coming back. I think Jordan Love's coming back this week. And I think – He's going to be in for a rude awakening against Brian Flores' defense. Give me the Vikings. Ooh. Those Vikings, man. This is tough. There's something right now. There's something. That defense is something right now. Yeller's taking the Vikings, right? Oh, yeah. He's feeling it. What's Junior doing? That's a good question. I think I'm going to roll with the Vikings, but if Jordan Love is playing, that's where it gets kind of interesting for I think me. he's playing. You think he's going to play? Officially going to play? Not officially, but count on him playing, I'd say. You know what? Give me the Packers. He's taking the Packers. Give me the Packers at home. At home. At home. That's true. Oh, okay. This the Vikings are unreal right now. I don't know how to. I'm a Vikings fan. If anybody you know, some people are getting mad at me because I don't pick the fight in the comments because I don't pick the Vikings every don't week. Pick the Vikings. I have been wrong, you know, but just, I pick who I think is going to win, and they've they've been pressed. They've played way better than expected. The, both sides of the ball look unreal. Brian Flores' defense is unreal, and Jordan Love coming back off an of injury, I could see it just being too much. There's a couple things that I don't love for the Vikings here. One is that they're due. They're due for a loss. It's not like a huge reason. But this is going to be their first game on grass, which doesn't sound like a big factor. I think it is going to Green Bay, one of the biggest rival games in sports. Could be tough. And the last time Jordan Love and the Packers offense saw Brian Flores' defense, they lit him up. And it seems a lot better right now, the Vikings' defense, but uh, it's LaFleur's going to have a really good game plan. It's just really going to depend. If Love is comfortable, is he okay post-injury or during this injury? But uh, if this was in Minnesota, I wouldn't hesitate. I'm going Vikings in Green Bay, first grass game for the Vikings. I'm going to take the Packers. Maybe I'll be – I hope I'm wrong again. That would be three in a row I'm wrong. 
Uh, but I, I'm kind of feeling the Packers and Green. Again, if it was in Minnesota, zero hesitation, I go Vikings. This is like, uh, it's like a battle between the. You know, it's early, but the coach of the year, top top yep. candidates right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, one making if, Malik Willis look like he's yeah top ten quarterback, and one making Sam Darnold like he's he's top three quarterback. If Love is out, I'm definitely taking the Vikings. And I said that last week with the Titans, if same. Love is out, taking the Titans. But the Vikings, the Titans and the Vikings are not the same team here. Oh, so yeah. the, the Vikings will beat the Packers if – and it might be close, actually, but they will beat them if Love is out, in my opinion, at least. So we got a good old-fashioned split there. At some point, you got to think Darnold kind of – like he's, he's playing above what we would expect, right? Yeah. At some point, he's got to come – I'm not saying he's going to take a huge step back, but he's got to come down to earth. This is correct. I'm just a little worried the second I pick my Vikings, they're going to lose, and I'm going to um, – yeah. So this is more of like a superstition thing. A tiny bit. I do think the Packers are going to win in Lambeau. Okay. I, I do, but if Love plays. But let's see, maybe he won't be 100%. If Love stinks. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, Steelers and Colts. I don't know. This one seems like a trap game to me. I don't know how I could pick I the, the Colts – so I was I'm, thinking the same thing, but I'm picking the Steelers. I don't know. Like, it's man, Justin Fields, that guy, man. I don't know. If, I don't think that's gonna last either. But, no. Um, you guys said both. You both are picking the Steelers. We that's are. so. It's so tough. I feel like the Colts are gonna win this game. Uh, but, I'm, but, I'm on the but, same boat. But I'm, but I'm just scared because I'm already down. No. I'm already last place right now, and and all these games I'm picking like this are not going my way. And I just have to go with the with, Colts with ran the all. I know it's last year, but they ran all over. I think it was like Trey Sermon ran all over the Steelers last year. It was like a big problem for Pittsburgh. Steichen's offense, you know, and now you got Richardson and Jonathan Taylor factored into that. It could just be a problem for them. Maybe this Steelers defense has been insane though. But they mainly win. They win every in every way. But they mainly win when they, you know, T.J. Watt gets going. And that pass defense gets going. But if the Colts just Get the ball first and just pound, pound, pound the football, pound the beef, and they just keep going. It, it maybe they this because every team seems to be slipping up for the most part. So maybe the Steelers finally slip up, but Steelers are the better team. That defense is insane right now. But also the Colts, even though the run defense picked it up last week, the run defense still is very much sus. And there's no DeForest Buckner in there. I think the Steelers will pound the football to Najee Harris, Jalen Warren, Justin Fields run as well. Uh, this will probably be a really close game, and it's a little bit of a trap game because the Steelers are kind of due for a loss. But they're better. The defense is unreal. The four zero Steelers. You gotta pick Pitts. You gotta pick Pittsburgh here. Everyone's got the Steelers. Everyone did it. I just think Anthony Richardson's going to make some costly mistakes. He just seems to seems to do that a lot. It seems like he's not a high IQ player for whatever reason. He makes some dumb mistakes, kind of like another quarterback in his division. I don't want to mention no names, mm-hmm. but they like come at the worst possible times <laughs> on the goal line, game on the line. It's just really, it's kind of crazy. I end up. I think Steichen's going to know that in a game like this where even when the Steelers are winning, it's close. You grind it out. It's a defensive battle. It's running the football. So going into this game, the game plan has to be like, we absolutely cannot turn it over. We turn it over one more time in them, we're going to lose in this close, tight battle. Field goal, keeping the ball, kick a field goal, could be the, diff- the difference. Shane Steichen will 100% realize that. So they can come into this game just pounding, the f- having a crazy game plan, pounding the football, You know, a lot of misdirection. You know they've been trying with the options. Maybe they've been sloppy with it. Maybe it maybe it works. Maybe you know, and they just throw Pittsburgh off and win a very tight game. I can definitely see it. It's just hard to pick that exactly happening. I think it'll be close. I'm just gonna go with the better team that will be able to run the football and play some really good defense. He just misses so many like layups. Yeah, yeah. He's there's like a highlight tape of A.D. Mitchell just being wide open and him not hitting him. That he could be up there for rookie of the year right now if his quarterback was hitting him. So. A little bit of a shame there, but these are cold. This is uh, that when I saw that guy singing that, I'm like that, that makes sense. That's that was my reaction. That makes sense. Just like the interactions with not all of them, but most of the Colts Colts fans over the years in the comments. I'm like, I mean, it really oh, okay. his song. Depending on his song this week, I might be changing over there. It really depends. All right, we'll be on the watch for that. <laughs> I don't really understand, but yeah, uh, this is a big one because it's a Nathaniel Hackett Ooh. game. And I oh, and I beat the piss out of them. Yeah, I, I think I think Hackett wins this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, give me the Jets. Broncos figured it out last week. They beat a good Bucks team. Yeah, out of nowhere. I don't know. I mean, did are they good now? Out of left field. Was the first two weeks just fluky? No, 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 no. no? 
I don't think. I don't think they so. play think tough physical ball on both sides. We're gonna get to the Bucks coming up here, but I just think the we talked about the injuries for them, you know, piling up a little bit after Week One. I think they kind of got away with it just because. They didn't really make too many changes with their roster. I like guess it's kind of the same team that they've been rolling with. Um, and then this this game, I think this game this past week really caught up to them. I think they really felt, you know, missing all those guys. I mean, Baker was under pressure a lot. The defense wasn't playing well. Um, but yeah, I think that's kind of what 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 we what led to the Broncos surprising a little bit. I mean, they could be sneaky. Maybe something clicked. They figured something out. But. Maybe. It's a tough matchup in New York. The Jets played really well last week, had the extra break. Uh, they can win by throwing the ball, running the ball, and playing defense. So uh, they're just a really solid football team. That Well, now Morgan Moses is out. Uh, the rookie fashion has to step in. Fashion has to step in. So we'll see how he does. Maybe he struggles a little bit. Broncos got some pressure last week against Baker. Maybe they do it against Rodgers. But bad matchup for the Broncos. We will take the Jets. Is everyone taking them? Everyone's taking them. Everyone, yeah, not too much of a surprise. Everyone Everyone's taking the fashion news. Everyone uh, picked against the Broncos last week, though, so we'll see what happens. Wait, didn't Junior say he was picking the Broncos every... I, I did say that if the Broncos won last week, I'd be taking them every week, but you guys did say I don't have to do that. Okay, <laughs> moving on. In my defense, thank oh, you. Oh, we got a good one here. Rematch from a playoff game where the Bucks shellacked the Eagles. They just... Baker and company took advantage of that defense. Does it? The defense of the Eagles stepped up last week. The offense was a little disappointing besides Sparkly and Goddard maybe. Uh, two teams that are pretty beat up right now. We'll see if Lane Johnson plays, see if Devontae Smith plays. They're both concussed. A.J. Brown said a couple weeks ago he's probably going to miss a few weeks, so I'd imagine with that hamstring maybe he's still out, but nothing's official there. The Buccaneers have a number of injuries on defense, but some of those guys questionable. Do they come back? Here's the deal with this one. The Eagles are more beat up on offense. Yeah. The Bucks are more beat up on defense. A lot of injuries. I'm going to go with the Bucks unless A.J. Brown suits up. He's just going to take over. I'm going with the Eagles then. Okay. I, don't know. I don't know what the chances of him playing are, but um, I think the strength of the Bucks defense, especially with a lot of injuries you know, happening in the secondary and stuff like that, I think the strength is their run-stopping D. Um, so that's the game plan, right? Stop Barkley, especially if A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith are out. Um, that's, that's your kind of game plan, and I think Baker kind of gets it gets it rolling again with, with all those weapons he has on offense. Yeah, Vita Vey is a big one for me on the D-line. Like, if he's healthy or not, it's just a massive difference. He might be the best run stuffer in football. Um I'm gonna, yeah, I mean, there's there's so many injuries. Yeah, I need to I need to know. I know. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Eagles and their run game is just too damn good. Saquon Barkley looks like I said, you know, I said so far I think the MVP is probably Josh Allen, Offensive Player of the Year right now, Saquon Barkley. And then you have Hurts running ability, and he's bound to pick it up in terms of the passing game with a beat up secondary of the Bucks, and they don't have too much of a pass rush presence. The defense got better last week. I don't think the defense plays great in this one to be honest. I don't think it plays bad. Uh, I'm gonna go Eagles, but if both AJ Brown and Devontae Smith are out, both yeah, of them. That's I'm gonna take the Bucks, I think. But Vita Vea, Winfield, yeah, these Vita are Vea's out. That's not good. That's a, it's so hard to pick these games because of that. But I'm right now I'm feeling the Eagles. If both those receivers are out, I'm probably switching to the Bucks. But if everybody is out for the Bucks, you know, Vea is a big one again. We we might be switching back and forth. So always keeping you guys updated uh, on Twitter with that type of stuff and the Let's picks. Just get like a split or something going here. Give me the Bucks. He's taking oh. the Bucks. Yeller and AOC got the Bucks as wow. well. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, I might be over there with you. See, though. last week I was lone wolfed on the Eagles, and I talked about how the lone wolves are high success, and then Junior switched over to the Eagles. It still works. So yeah. So it wasn't. A, I don't know if we count that as a lone wolf anymore. But two weeks in a row. And now this one, I'm AJ Brown's gonna suit up. I'm gonna switch over, mm -hmm. and they're gonna win. Two weeks in a row, I got the Eagles. I'm lone wolfed on them, at least for now. I'm feeling, I'm feeling better. I'm feeling, feeling pretty good. It. Okay. it was a close one last week, a little bit of a scary one with the Saints. I did think they outplayed them, though. They kept marching down the field, and then Sirianni or Kellen Moore, whoever's deciding those things, would do something really stupid. And, uh, yeah, it kind of came down to the wire there. But I do think the Eagles were the better team. So, uh, not a ton of picks right last week, but I felt pretty good about that one, okay? Uh, that should be a good one, though, eagles Bucks on Sunday. No, oh, oh, liquid red, IV red game rocket. of the oh, game. Red, red Dalton. Rifle. Red Rocket <laughs> Rifle, Red Rifle game of the week. I say it wrong every time. It's not on purpose. I think we should change the Liquid IV 
game of the week to uh, another team. Titans? Yeah. Uh, Maybe. Bengals are 0-3, folks. The offense really got going, but, man, was that defense The defense stinky. is so bad. Oh, how is that a Bengals defense? They're beat up on the interior D-line, but what happened to the pass do defense? Think, do you think Cam Taylor Britt, Britt says something bad about the Yeah, he better the shut his mouth. Or he better Andy shut Dalton. his mouth. Um, Got torched. The Bengals' pass defense looked worse than the run defense this past week against the Commanders, surprisingly, even though they're both very bad. I, I still worry more about the run defense, not only because they're beat up in the interior, but they're just bad at stopping the run anyways. So the Panthers might come out, and Hubbard, who was a star last week, might just dominate them, and Andy Dalton might hit some clutch plays. So I do worry about that, but the Bengals' offense is clicking. Now's the time. I think they score. I think both teams score it up in this one, but I think the Bengals... Score more points. That's how you win the game, right? You score more points. Right. Uh, yeah. I'm going to take the Bengals offense. Joe Burrow was awesome last week. Chase was awesome. T. Higgins. Uh, Isavas like played very, was playing very well, too. I feel, so. like, uh, I feel like Big Lou over there is just going to like rip that whole defense a new one. I think they're going to come back and – and bounce back in this one. Yeah, that's not a Lou Anaromo defense. No, that's... like he's gonna be he's gonna be pissed off. So I'm gonna go with the Bengals. I think they're just due for a win here. I think they're getting going. They always start slow to start the year. Maybe that maybe we'll blame that for the Titans starting slow. Because yeah, they got, yeah. yeah, they got a Bengals. Yeah, coach. I mean, yeah. maybe that's maybe that's the problem. I don't know. Or Will Levis just giving the ball to the other team. I don't uh, know. Give me the Bengals. But everyone's again, got the Bengals here. Everyone's everyone's uh, planning on them, you know, stopping the skid here. Mm. This, they got skid marks in their skid. pants. <laughs> it's rough. Uh, been there. You've been there? Been there. I don't think I've ever <laughs> shit my pants. I'm sure I did when I was like a little kid, but I can't recall I skidding my pants. In the last five years. <laughs> in the last five years? Within the last five years, yeah. Good to know. Good to know. Um, well, okay. I've been going to the bathroom, by the way. No, I'm doing great. You're oh, doing yeah. great in the good. bathroom. Right. Yeah, doing great. All Squatty right. potty right. and everything. Yeah. Oh. Squatty potty game of the week. Oh, the All Jags. Right. Speaking of squatty potty. Oh, another 0-3 team. The like. Jags and the Texans. The, the, the Texans were off last week. They couldn't really stop off. the run. I mean, they couldn't stop Darnold either. They couldn't do anything. Uh, but they'll be fine this week. They're gonna. They're gonna. I mean, the Jags are probably gonna figure it out at some point. I still don't trust them to be good enough. But they're really bad right now. The offensive line's bad. Trevor Lawrence is bad. Doug Peterson's god how, awful. How There's hot, no pass rush. How hot is Doug Peterson's seat right now? It's he's got skid marks, <laughs> for <laughs> sure. They're on the seat. So I think Houston. Uh, they were coming off that high of beating the Bears, and then they the just, high of beating the Bears. Like you know, like a championship, a kind of hangover type of thing, and then they. Blew it to the Vikings. So, you know, give me Houston. I think that this is going to be my snot pounding of the week. Oh, do you think Doug Pearson gets fired after this one? No. They got to go to London coming up. I think they probably wait till they got two weeks in a row in London. So maybe they wait till they come back. Man. No, no, this is tough. Even this is a tough uh, Imagine firing him uh, after the first week in London and then he's, he's still. Fly back. He's got to fly back on his own. <laughs> Uh, they but have back-to-back weeks in London. I'm pretty positive. I'm not a schedule guru. I don't know what's up, but they, pretty, did that last they play year, Bears. Right? They play the Bears in one of them. They did that yeah. last year, right? Yeah. Some BS. They beat the right Bills. They, that's a free. That's a free win right there. Like the second week. The second week is a free win. It should just be a. Well, free look win. up the schedule. Let's look up the schedule right now. What, what, what we got here? What do we got? All right. We don't want to tell a story. Tell a story. I actually have a story. I'm pretty sure I told. At some point, somebody said we got to bring story time back, but I'm pretty sure I told it a long time ago, but I was telling somebody else the other day. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, it, week six at Bears in London, so you're not the second game. Yes. Nice, nice, nice. nice. Thanks, yes. This, the poor Patriots. <laughs> Patriots are losing that. That's probably the Jags' they, first win probably, right there. That's probably why they put it the Patriots. They're like, eh, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll let them. I like how it says at Bears and verse Patriots. Um, but – yeah, uh, Foyal Okun is out there, star linebacker on top of you know Tyson Campbell bang, being banged up. And where's the edge rushers right now? I mean, Josh Allen, Trayvon Walker. There, there's like no one out on the outside. I, Ryan Nielsen, I feel like, is a good defensive coach. What he did with in the past with the Saints and with Atlanta last year. So I don't know what's going on with Jacksonville. Well, they've got bigger problems than that, though. Trevor Lawrence. I've been defending. I don't defend too many quarterbacks. I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Uh, 
I'm a hard ass with quarterbacks. Mm. I'm like, you go figure it out, all right? Stop making excuses. And I don't really make excuses for anyone, but there was a guy I was kind of defending and saying, I know the talent's in there. I really wasn't making excuses again. but And that was Trevor Lawrence, but now it's like, I don't – what else – I know the talent's in there, but I, he's just not showing it. I don't know. Do you see him spin away from no one last night? It's pretty sweet. You know yeah. when someone's about to sag you from the back, he, he spun and no one was there, and he was kind of like just looking around. The like, Bengals Commanders game. <laughs> well, yeah, after a little bit, he kind of had to pull one of those. That was a pretty good game. Um, but Texans figure it out this week. C.J. Stroud bounces back, has a has a really solid game. Doug Peterson can't call plays anymore. Yeah. Is he calling the plays? Oh, they have uh, – what's the offense coordinator's Press name? Taylor. Press Taylor. Press Taylor. Yeah, who's who's got more of a say-so over it's there? It's always a thing with them. It's like, who's calling the play? It's always like a mystery. Uh, give me the Texans. Get her on the Texans. All right. Jags stink. They do. It's all right. Titans stink too, Jags. I'm not, not just hating on you. And I have a story time. I have a story for story time. Somebody said we got to bring back story time. This is more of a football – Related one, but what's? Let's see um, the next matchup, though. I've definitely told this before. You guys probably heard it plenty of times. Oh, that's a good game, though. Yeah, that's a good we one. got Commanders. We got Cardinals. Here's my story of the week. So back when I played high school football, which was some time ago, before the season, there would always be a seven on seven, like a big. It wasn't really a tournament, but um, a bunch of teams in the state go there, and so it was my senior year. So. A team that we were lined, we were playing against had the number one recruit in the whole nation. He was a receiver. I played corner. His name was Kyle Prater. He was the number one recruit at the time. He was going to USC. So I had to guard him in one of the seven on sevens, and he was the ball would be the ball would snap, and he would kind of just mope around like he's like I like almost like I'm too good to be here. And first off, I was like five foot. How tall was I then? Five eight maybe. Back then, I was pretty damn small. I'm still small, but I was really small then. And this guy was a full-grown man in high school, like six foot five, just massive. But I line up on him, and he would, you know, just walk his routes. And then one time, I decided to go up and press him pre-snap. I go up and I go to press him, and he's like, "Oh hell no!" And he looks at his quarterback, and he's like, "This." And I was in cover too, so I wish I pressed him a little bit longer. I wish I stayed with. I, I wish I just took him down the field, so we double teamed him. But I stayed in the flat, and then. Terrible throw to him, and he went over our safety and just took the ball. And there's, a, if you guys ever heard of Rivals, it's like a recruiting website. There was a cameraman with the, you know, from Rivals standing right on the sideline next to him, and the guy's jumping up and down, going nuts while he's holding the camera. So it was pretty. This the funniest part was the guy, the, the kid wasn't trying, and then all of a sudden he saw me go to press him. Like I'm like, he's like five times bigger than me, and he's like, oh, give me the fucking ball. And then he went and mossed our safety. I wish I just, if I had the knowledge I have now, I would have just. Stuck with them because nobody was probably in the flat. I was probably just doing my job. You got to do more than that. You got to do more, than, do your more job. than your job. Mm-hmm. But um, good anyway, times. Kyle good time. So Prater ended up going to USC. He ended up being a bust. He was the number one overall recruit. He transferred to Northwestern. Couldn't really do a whole lot there. I think he tried out. He was on the Saints practice squad maybe for a year or two. So it didn't work out. Maybe the attitude. Maybe just taking reps off. I don't know. Maybe he learned. should have learned something that day. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. All right. Good one here. Good. Give me the Cardinals. Ooh. At home. In the dome. In the dome. I don't know if it's going to be open or Rolling not. Rolling the grass. Give me in. the dome. The, did you weird. see the commanders? How good they looked? How good? They, they look nice. Jane Daniels looks like they got themselves a quarterback. Gonna Terry just, McLaurin. Uh, it's going to be a shootout. Shootout? It's going to be a fun one. It's going to be a fun one. I'm going to go with the Cardinals, though. Um, Austin Eckler got banged up. He actually looked really good uh, yesterday, too. Yep. Brian Robinson has has looked pretty good this year, um, but I just like Kyler. I like what I'm seeing out of Kyler Murray. I don't know. I don't know how they're one and two. I mean, they played some tough opponents, but I like them at home bouncing back in this one. Commanders caught my eye. We talked about going there. They could be sneaky. Maybe a little more sneaky than I thought. Uh, they caught my eye for sure. Jane Daniels took a major, major step up from just last week to this week. They can run the ball. They can throw the ball. They're clutch on third down, fourth down. I, the Bengals' defense, we're labeling it bad, but that's a well-coached defense. That's usually a really good pass defense. So give the Commanders credit. Jane Daniels stepped up and it elevated everyone else. You see McCaffrey even making plays, but McLaurin was awesome. 
Uh, you know, so they're they're going to be a threat going forward, like not like a Super Bowl threat or a deep playoff team threat, but they're sneaky. They're going to be a threat. I'm intrigued. I just do not like them in this game, though. I love the Cardinals in this game, and the Cardinals. I think Pete touched on it. They're the Commanders have a better record. The Cardinals right now. It's pretty crazy. The Cardinals are a really good one and two team. They hung with the Bills. They were beating them for a bit. Uh, the line. The issue with the Lions game. They actually played pretty decent defense. They. They played pretty decent defense. They couldn't run the ball, which usually they are good running the ball. In this system, they sometimes they overdo the run. So the run needs to be there. Not really for Kyler, Kyler to play good, but for the system to play good. And the Lions are so good stopping the run. The Commanders are not. You know, the Commanders' defense, as good as they were against the Bengals, the, the Commanders, meaning the offense, the defense was rough. You know, so I don't really trust them. And they run a lot of man coverage. Man coverage not going to be great against scrambling quarterback of Kyler Murray and his arm talent, but they will be able to run the ball. I thought Zach Moss and Chase Brown were running all over them. They probably just didn't run them enough. So I, I love the way the Cardinals at home match up, mainly offense versus defense against the Commanders. I'm, I, I like the Commanders, but I, I dare I say I'm quite confident with the Cardinals. It's hard to be confident about any game right now. But Kingsbury revenge game? Kingsbury revenge game. I don't think he gets it. I think Kyler gets it. Okay. Me too. Yeller? Cardinals. Everyone's got the Cardinals here. Oh, I thought somebody would do I it. Know. Watch out for those commanders. Maybe Jaden Daniels running around just Funny, a little too much. Like we have so many. There's so many good games, but I feel like we're all picking the same thing. It's just weird. Yeah, it's well, it'll, it'll change. There's one that's really tough one, maybe multiple. Uh, not this one, though. I, the, the Niners are really beat up, and they slipped up big time against a very hurt Rams team. The Patriots kind of showed them true, their true selves last week. I think they play a little better than they played against the Jets in this one. You but think Drake May gets in there? Get him probably in there, not. Right? They don't really want him to be in there uh, just because you're playing a good team and it's not a great situation. I think Jordan Mason runs well in this game. Uh, it's not all on Jennings, even though he ran okay last week and Purdy played well, but it's not all Jawan on Jennings. Jawan Jennings. Jawan Jennings went off and they still lost somehow, but give me the Niners. They play better this week on both sides of the ball. Jordan Mason goes off. They win the football game. The Patriots are looking more and more like the team that we thought, who they thought they were. Yeah, no, who I agree. Thought. Give me the Niners. Yeah, um, I think everyone's the the Niners got to try to get out of this, this injury spell with uh, as many wins as possible because I feel like they're a good team. They're going to – as they get healthier, I mean, it's just tough. Well, Such Hargrave's tough not getting healthier. He's not coming back. I'm worried about McCaffrey because yeah. now he's going to Germany to see a specialist on his Achilles. It was originally a calf injury late last year. Kind of carried over, re-aggravated it, and it kind of spread. I don't think spread's the right word. Spread. Uh, it's a disease. It's a disease out there. Went to his Achilles. Just overcompensated, obviously, and it went to his, his Achilles. That's scary. Right after the contract. But, um, hey, at least they got Jordan Mason. Looks pretty good. Definitely not the same, but definitely not the same, though. Yeah, everyone Niners. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, I don't see the Patriots winning that game. Um, Who knows, though? I could see Stevenson uh, picking it back up. He had a really bad game last. Oh, Gibson almost looks better than him right now. But I think the running game could kind of get going, maybe, and give him some sort of chance. But I don't know. We got a good one next. Hopefully, oh, we do. Yeah. This was the toughest one to pick on the week. Two teams that are extremely disappointing, uh, but both. Both of them got a surprising win in week two. I guess the Browns one's not that surprising anymore because they beat the Jags, like one of the worst teams in football. The Raiders beat the Ravens in week two. But the Browns. I mean, in week one, they were both a disaster. In week three, they were both a disaster. They're both very disappointing. They both have a star pass rusher, some of the best players in the NFL with Miles Garrett and Max Crosby. Max Crosby. They, they, yeah. The Browns are... Browns are more disappointing though. Like the Raiders didn't have that much expectations coming in. I mean the Brown I guess the Browns Browns the, have that a division, lot of talent. Yeah, that's what I mean the division's tough, but like they're <laughs> just loaded with talent. So you're like, what's going on with the Browns here? And that's why I decided in the toughest game to pick of the, of the week, I'm going to take the Browns just because they have a lot of talent. It's It's been three weeks. You can't really judge too, too much off three weeks, even though we're going to do it. They're, they're pretty bad. I think Stefanski's got tricks up his sleeve to use this talent better. I think they find a way to win. My problem with the Raiders is they cannot run the football. They're the worst team in football running the ball. And this year, what does it seem like so far? What's the Why is this year unique right now? Because it's more of a running league right now, and they can't run the football. So they rely on Minshew being an incredible passer, and they're going to play against – and that's the thing here because the Browns' defense is inconsistent. They're, you know, they, they, they're underwhelming with the talent they have, but – the Raiders are one-dimensional going into the game, so they're fully 
game planning for the pass, and the Browns have a really good pass defense. At least they should. So it makes the game plan simpler. They have more talent. Uh, Epps went down for the Raiders, but I am worried about the Browns offensive line. It's looked really bad, and it's been beat up, and now Teller's down, but maybe they do they get Conklin back. We'll see. But uh, then they find a way to make that extra play. They absolutely have to in this one. Um, but, yeah, the battle between Miles Garrett and Max Crosby, who gets more sacks, maybe wins the game. So, uh, But I will take the Browns. That is what I'm feeling in a 50-50 game. Pete, you or me? I can go. I'm, like, back and forth on this one. I think you kind of said it there, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go with the Browns as well. Um, but if the Raiders against the Ravens show up, they're no, going to win I, easy. No, I, That's I, the thing, uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, yeah, is Jack Conklin playing? I feel like Max Crosby could just have a day, um, especially with, you know, they got – Dewan Jones, yeah, he's solid, but uh, Crosby's just way too fast for him. Like back and forth. The run game, though, does scare me. Like the, the Raiders are kind of one-dimensional, and I think the Browns' defense is – I mean, it's pretty good. It should be able to, you know, they should be able to stop the run, but also should be, able be to create but, takeaways, but, too. but be focused on the pass game here. They did make some plays. Amari Cooper had had a pretty good game last last week, but that was pretty much it. That's all the Browns. Kind of, that's just such a tough one. I'm gonna go with the Browns, but I'm kind of back and forth on this one. I'm taking the Raiders. There you taking go. the Raiders at home. Another uh, thing I don't like. Sorry, but no, that they're Antonio Pierce is already like, even though they're not switching Calling quarterbacks, people. he's like, oh already, yeah, he's doing that. Yeah, I, I just don't love that yeah. either. But it also all everything Pierce is saying seems messy, but it also could light a fire beneath them and they get going. I can definitely see that. But mm-hmm. go on, Junior. No, I was just just going to say, this is, like we're saying, it's a 50-50 game. It's tough, but I think that the Raiders at home, I think that they're going to establish the run. You have to establish that run. But I, I don't know, the Browns are just – something's seriously wrong with the Browns. Like, it, with especially like Pete, was, Pete touched on, the expectations, they're just so underwhelming. You thought Deshaun Watson coming back, they were able going to be able to get it all together, but it just – even when they win, it doesn't look – pretty looks terrible yeah so it's just tough I don't know they were so sloppy last week I mean it it looked like preseason football but they and that's kind of like it's bad but there's a pot like they actually had a chance to win that game yeah still with all that I think Stefanski pulls something out of his ass here I think they're less sloppy I didn't if I I it's the confidence is growing a little bit even though this is my least confident game but we will see. What's Yeller going? Everyone's got the Browns. Oh, actually. wow. Junior's by himself. I'm surprised. When I originally saw this game, I always looked during the late afternoon slate on Sunday, like the previous week, and I was like, God, that's definitely the toughest one of the week, but I was probably leaning Raiders at that time. But, yeah. Back so and forth on this I'm one. surprised. I'm surprised that only Junior is on the Raiders. It could be a good one there. Battle between, My- again, battle between Miles Garrett and Max Crosby. We will see. What do we got next? What do we got? No. Oh. No. Yeah. Uh, Chiefs are close Derwin. to being one and two, but they're not. They find ways to win. The Chargers are very beat up. I mean, Herbert went down the last game. Alt went down. Slater, Slater went down. Bosa went down. Derwin James, Derwin James is suspended. He's going to cover Kelsey. Kelsey kind of broke out in the second half finally, even thing, even even when things weren't looking great. I think he gets going even more in this game. Rasheed Rice is a monster. Uh, Chiefs win. Yeah, Chiefs. Yeah, everyone's going pretty, Chiefs. pretty confident with that one. Everyone's going Chiefs. Pretty. I don't know if the Chargers, even if they aren't beat up, are they as good as they, that two and O label they had before that? I will say, if they didn't get beat up in this game, in the last game, they might have beat the Steelers. I thought they were outplaying them. Then it got close to even, and then Bosa went down. The defense got worse, and then both tackles went down, and Herbert went down. It's like they got no chance. So I do think they could be three and Could be not for sure. Could be three and O if they didn't get injured in that game. But the Chiefs will be too much. They will take care of business and win this game. Um, you said everyone, right? Yep. Guest picker, Aiden O'Connor. Oh, now you're confusing me. It's O'Connor. Uh, <laughs> awesome Aiden on Twitter. I, I Twitter, awesome I think it is. Uh, all right. What do we got? Sunday oh. night. Football. We're in for a treat. We are in for a treat, folks. The Bills are. This is their third primetime game in a row. Oh, in the last two games, the game was over instantly. They shellacked the Dolphins. Ass beating to snot pounding against the Jags. It was ass beating to snot pounding. And I asked on Twitter, what the hell's after snot pounding? Because they could have been that. It was that. Whatever it is, people give me good suggestions for what's after snot pounding. But uh, how's the Bills run defense? It's not good, but we haven't seen it yet. We haven't wow. seen that yet. But the pass defense looks really good. Looks yeah. well coached. Play like a team. The pass rush looks really good. 
uh, they, they look really solid. So if the Ravens, you know, they, they could make Lamar miss. They can have him, you know, turn it over. I have Ru- a feeling. I'm predicting the run defense is good. We don't really know yet. We really don't know. I have a feeling that the Ravens are going to be pounding the rock and they're going to be playing pretty well. Like they're going to be up in this game. But kind of like what they did against Dallas here. They're going to kind of let the comeback happen, and it's Josh Allen and the boys over there. And I think they're just going to make, you know, that extra play. I think it's, this is going to be my squeaker of the week here. It's going to be a good one for Sunday Night Football. I'm going to go with the Bills here in a, in a squeaker. All right. I'm taking the Bills. It's He's just it's Bills. so tough in these primetime games to go against the Bills. I feel like I get screwed every time that's the case. So I got to go with the Bills. I just think that they're the better all-around team. It's tough. They look great. Yellers taking the Bills. Yeah, AOC, AOC taking the Bills. Taking the Bills. We're going to have another lone wolf of the week. I'm oh. taking the Ravens. At Are you kidding me? The Bills look great. I love the Bills. I told people before the season that they're better than people think. People thought they got worse. They're much more balanced. They're healthier, even though they're not healthy at the linebacker position. So I'm thrilled about the Bills. Josh Allen MVP was my prediction before the year. It's looking great right now. It is early. The Ravens are disappointing. They feel like they're worse than normal. They're going to click at some point. They will. And I think it's tonight. The Ravens at home. Or tonight, Sunday night. (laughs) Tonight (laughs) and Sunday night. Uh, Getting going on a Tuesday night. Ravens at home, primetime football. I think they run. It's a totally different matchup than what the Bills have seen. I think they run very, very well in this game. I think the Bills are going to have to game plan around that. They're they're going to control the clock. I'm oddly confident in this one. I don't know. The Bills are so the Bills are better than the Ravens. They're better, but that's not how it works. Sunday night football going to Baltimore. Ravens. Yeah, they're a tough game plan for them. I, the Ravens' defense isn't isn't the same as what it used to be, though. So Josh Allen could have a day on them. You have to account for a lot. I love the way that that Joe Brady's the way Joe Brady's calling that offense. The play designs, the playbook is deep. I love it. It's going to be a good game. Ravens run game at home, prime time, classic Lamar, classic Harbaugh. They're going to get it done. I got. I, I'm surprised. I'm the only one taking the Ravens in that one. Even though the Bills, close one. Bills look great. They look like possibly the best team in football. I'd say that right now. I think you can argue the Chiefs, the Bills, and the Vikings based off right now, not long term, but uh, that's what it is. And the Ravens got to get there because they can. And we'll the see. Titans. And the Titans. <laughs> the Titans. Excited for Sunday night. Two lone wolfers right now. Wolfies. What about Monday night, though? Are you excited for Monday night? Two Ooh. Monday night games again. A doubleheader. I mean, this one is better than the other one. I'm kidding. It is not. <laughs> uh, is anybody going to watch this one? I don't know. Maybe. Who uh, do you think is going to watch this one? You're going to watch it. Oh, yeah. You are going to watch oh, it. Oh, yeah. Can't, Titans. I just love it so much. Just love the first three weeks watching Titans. this team. Dolphins. Monday night football. They played on Monday night last year. Was that Monday night? Yeah. And the Titans pulled it off. It was sloppy, and they pulled it off. Uh, I want to see, see that Will Levis playing here. I feel like it's just weird. I feel like he's, uh, I mean, he's not playing great. I'm not going to say he's playing great, but there's, like, people that are just, like, there you go. Get get over there. I got you, Pete. Thanks. Go on, go ahead. People think he's like he's like the worst quarterback in the league. Like he's not. Like he's made three, now three in a row. Like just bad mistakes. Very bad. And Kurt, Kurt Warner actually. I don't know if you watch Kurt. Probably not. You watch Kurt Warner's breakdown. He was kind of just saying it's a. It's not real. It's not a really good play call. Like I didn't. I'm not game plan. I'm I'm a coach. I don't. I'm not game plan against the Packers. But like. Coming out in first and ten, going empty and calling all hitches, and they're just sitting there like, I mean, I don't know what you're supposed to really do. You're, just, you're, you're throwing a hitch. He threw the hitch as Hopkins was coming out of his break, and Jair Alexander was just sitting there ready to take it to the house. So not 100% on him, uh, but there is plays that – I think you got to be aware where the corner is, though. You do. You can't just like, there you was, go. He was seven <laughs> yards off, and like he didn't really backpedal at all. He was kind of just sitting there, but um, – He's not playing all – it's not all bad. It's not all on him either. The offensive line's been – the right side of the offensive line's been pretty awful. Um, they got to fix that. But, I don't know, I'm just hoping that the They got to run the football in this game. Yeah, the defense – Run the football. The defense could bounce back here. Um, and then, yeah, they got to get the run game going because they didn't get the run game going against the Packers, and that's where they kind of fell apart. Who the hell's playing quarterback for the Dolphins? I yeah. mean, if it's Tyler Huntley, I might reconsider my pick, actually. Tyler I think they could do some damage, but I'm going to take the Titans in this one. I think they'll run the ball well. 
I think this, they play their best game yet. Defensively, they were off last week. I do like the defense, though, and going against a quarterback, a, a team with a quarterback question right now, and they find a way to win. It'll probably be very close, though. Yeah, I'm taking the Titans as well. But I still do think Levis is going to throw a bad interception. Probably. Sorry. Just bow He did last year against Is everyone really taking the Titans? Wow. Again, see if mistakes are made. If they, uh, if they, if they lose, I'm done. I'm done with the Never Titans. picking them. Yeah, I'm, I'm not done. picking them anymore. Done. I'm done. With my own team. Surprise! no one took the Dolphins. If Tua was playing, oh yeah, I think we'd all be taking the Dolphins. The Dolphins. <laughs> uh, everyone on the Titans on the first Monday night game. Wow. That's right. S- Monday? I almost said Sunday. Monday night. The other Monday night oh, football game. Oh, look at that Lions. We got a good one. The Lions are wearing their black, new blackout uniforms at home Sweet. against the Seahawks. The Seahawks are rolling right now. Both teams have some injuries, but the Lions have some new ones out there. Uh, Ragnow, I think the best center in football, if not the second best center in football, uh, but I think the best. Uh, he's he's po- probably going to be out. Laporta is day to day as well, so that could be tough. I, to, for picking this game, I do think we got to monitor these injuries, and you know possibly could see some switches. Man, uh, this is actually a really good game. The Seahawks can actually give the the Lions defense has been playing really well, but the Seahawks I think could give them some some problems through the air. I think Jackson Smith and Jigba has a day in this game. The Lions are struggling. Even though the defense is looking good, they are struggling covering slot receivers. I think JSN goes off from the slot. Geno has played well, but he also makes some mistakes here and there. Mm, the Seahawks defense has played so well, but they haven't really they haven't seen the Lions yet. They have not seen the Lions. And golf hasn't been great, but they haven't seen golf. They have not seen this running back duo. In Detroit, Sunday night, it, it's going to be a really – I'll say night. Monday night. I keep saying Sunday. It's going to be a – I think this might be a squeaker. I'll go squeaker in this one. We could even see overtime in this one. Ooh. I'll take Detroit. I'll take the Lions in Detroit. If it was in Seattle, I would go with the Seahawks because I think their passing game could do something this game. Home field advantage That's does it. So Love, Lions run game might be my favorite thing in all of football. If I had to pick something in all of football, like part of a team – I'm a Vikings fan. I think the Lions' run game is my favorite thing in all of football. Uh, and there's those, more. In those black unis. And the, the, those are nice. Their uniforms are They're elite incredible. They're incredible. Elite. But I will say, i got to back my Vikings on this one. The best helmet in football is the Vikings. I love the retros from last week as well. Uh, can't wait to see the all whites. I think the best helmet. I do love the new Lions helmet just because that, that, the shade of blue. What is that, Honolulu Blue? Honolulu Face Blue. Face mask really pops. Mm-hmm. But my favorite helmets in football, those are going to be up there just because of the face mask. But the Vikings and the Eagles, I think, have the best. I don't, I don't. I think everybody should be in agreement with that. I mean, those unique helmets, I mean, come on. Give me the Lions. On. Give me the Lions. Off topic there. Uh, um, I think that if Seattle knows what's good for them, they're, they come out in their retros. You know I mean? you got to fight fire with fire at this point. Um, I just think that <laughs> – they need uh, white retros, though. Yeah. They do. That would be nice. They do. Bring they back the they white used to ones. wear like some white retros. That's what I mean. Or they just come out in the, like those lime green, the oh, full green, neon those green. Those nice. Yeah. Um, Haven't seen those. Back like, like the Color Rush days. Yeah. Um, but the Lions offense, I just think, is better. The Seahawks, they're playing great. But I don't know. I just I trust the Lions more, especially at home in that running game, like you said. I don't know. I think it's going to be – Mike McDonald with the Ravens last year, different team, but he had a great game plan for the Lions last year. Well, Maybe they tough. slow him down. I'm going to monitor those injuries. Yeah, it's but big. I'm going to go with the Lions for now just because they're at home and, and all the reasons we already said. But, yeah, I mean, don't sleep on the Seahawks. You know, they, yeah. haven't, they haven't played anyone like that's that great, but still, they're again, it's a new coach, like different system. It's impressive that they're starting 3-0. and I said they were the sneaky team to watch this year. The year last year, I said the Texans they made the playoffs. The year before, I said the Jags they made the playoffs when they're supposed oh. to be terrible. And the year before that, I said the Bengals and they made the Super Bowl. So I'm on fire with that. I also have the Titans up there with the Seahawks. That one's not looking good. Ugh. Um, Yeller Lions for everyone else. Everyone. Wow. Wow. That's a it's a close game. Squeaker yeah. of the week. I I think the Seahawks receivers are going to do some damage. I really think that Rona. Nope. Nope. Okay, he's good. Clean. Rona, check. Uh, we just tested him. He's clear. Yeah, I think the Seahawks receivers really have a day in this one. See if Kenneth Walker's back. That would be pretty – the Lions shut down the run, though. I think McNeil, Lee McNeil was a little beat up after last game, though. So, yeah, some injuries to monitor here. Mainly on offense for the Lions, center and tight end. Some star players there. Seahawks do have some injuries Both as well. Both out. I might switch this one. Yeah. If this was in Seattle – 
It's kind of like the Vikings Packers game for me. If this was in Seattle, I'd be going like prime time in Seattle. I'd be going with Seahawks, but in Detroit, that could be the difference there. They don't have the twelfth man. They don't have the twelfth man. man, and they haven't really played anybody yet, have they? No. They played the quarterbacks. They played Bo Nix. They played Joey Brissett, and they played Skylar Thompson. Yeah. Tough part for me. Not saying that they can't play against good teams. I believe in the Seahawks. It's just it's another test. This is another big. Te- this is a new big test for them. So. Um, yeah. Yeah. There you have it for the it's picks. Been a good week. Good week. A Hopefully a little match. bit back. We, one of us has to get in the double digits this week. <laughs> like, we just have to. We got to do it. Team effort. Team effort. We're rooting for each other here. We're due. We're due. Uh, anybody got any stories or zingers? Zingers or stories? Zingers. Yeah. You still all in on the Costco guys? Uh, I mean, I watch them every night. Before bed? Mm-hmm. First thing in the morning, last thing at night. Okay. Good to no know. other way to do it. Boom. <laughs> Pete loves them. No. no. I don't watch the Costco guys. I'm out, I'm out on the Costco guys. He's Are out. you serious, Pete? You're so in and he's out. That's a Pete. It's a bummer. I feel, like, I feel like you think you think that they're like kidding, like they're like just like doing it just like to be funny and like be famous. I think they're dead serious though. No way. <laughs> Let us know no in the way. comments. Are the Costco guys dead serious or are they trying serious. to are they putting on an act to kind of be funny and get views? I think they're trying to be. I think they're characters. I think it's a little bit of both. I think like they like when they started, they were definitely dead serious and like they're like, okay, people like this stupid yeah. shit. I mean, I don't, I don't know if they think it's stupid though. I think they just they it, think they're, they're being. No. They keep going with it because like it's been doing it's blew up. It's doing it's doing well. I can't wait for Pete's buy team of the week. Is that start next week? Next mm-hmm. week, Titans have a buy, right? Yeah. Oh boy. It's going to be fun. It's always one of my favorite segments in the history of the Goat House. But we have loads of content here. We got score predictions, picks against spread next, but we have power rankings already up. We have a bunch of recap videos, grades, tiers, things like that, Uh, locks video, all kinds of content. Got a bunch of shorts as well. Subscribe. Turn notifications on. Like the video. Join us next week for weekly pickums. We'll be here alongside the Hall of Famers, Pete and Junior. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Come on! I was waiting for one of you idiots. Oh, to say I, I just wanted to do the point. Oh, there's.